Hello and welcome to the third part of this series about creating an interface that can run uh, one of your scripts that you've writ wrote before. Um, this is the third part. If you haven't watched the other two, I will leave a link in the description if you feel that you need to watch them. And today I'm going to show you how to uh, create some labels to put inside these blue frames. These two frames are inside the center frame and here it is. So this center frame contains these two. This is part of one and this is number two. So without further ado, let's start coding. Um, okay, so what we have so far is this. And we're going to need to add the labels inside these frames so they show up here. I'm going to close this. And the way we do it, uh, like we did here, or is it like this one? Uh, we're going to start adding them. And actually, I'm going to leave the pack to the end because I want to be able to uh, sort them accordingly after I'm done with the creation. And uh, okay. Okay, so here we have the city from, let me get it here, so here we have, ah, here we have the city from, which is this one, here we have uh, city to, and notice that city from is going to uh, frame one. Main, uh, frame main one with the text from and the two is going to frame num main two well the cd2 frame number two and likewise with the dates departure date is going to number one and the return date to number two uh, in case you're wondering about these spaces uh, i've added them to make sure oh. well nothing will happen because we still don't have the the packing for this stuff uh, I still didn't tell take Inter where to put these labels and we're gonna just put this one uh, from city back Right. Um, left. So let's see what happens. This is what happens. So we're going to pack the other items and let's see where they are placed. The from city and the departure date and now the to city and the return date so the order which I'm placing this is important because um, we want to pack them uh, well step by step uh, remember the pack is going to think of it like depositing each item regardless of which uh, row or column you want to you want it to be well let's run it and see okay so right now we can start we see actually the difference in the relief here so one is sunken one is raised 
and so we're going to have to put them the same but uh, you can start seeing the importance of the spaces here it's just to kind of make this more or less aligned and um, this is what I got and so this part let's just change this to sunken and see now it looks better well it's not particularly uh, nice but it is what it is so what are we going to put here we're going to create the variables that are going on the entry boxes and each one of these label will have an entry box that we will ask the user to insert some some details and then we want to use that information so whatever the user is going to type there is going to be a special kind of variable it's going to be a take inter a special variable which is called a string var and let's show you how to do it so this is what they look like um, it, it's going to be still a normal variable for, from our naming system here but um, the way it's going to work is that it will track every time the user inputs something we're going to be able to track that and to each change there is in this variable uh, caused by the user we're going to be able to do something on that event okay it's going to get more clear uh, later um, yeah I think that's the best way I can explain at this point so we define from city 1 to city 1 departure date 1 and return date 1 I'm not sure why well okay it, the naming was kind of confusing um, yeah, these are the entry text that the user will input. Okay, and for that we need some entries, which is the next widget that I'm going to talk about. Um, before that, because those are, um, I'm going to add some kind of functionality that has to do with this kind of variables that requires me to create some functions before and in the article I explained this um, you can check a link for the article in the description of the video in the article I explained this a little bit better uh, with the functions so let's get to it and I'm gonna add the functions over here we're going to have Let's start heading this one. This is a simple one, and <clears throat> what this will do with our button to exit the app is quite self explanatory. Window destroy. So at some point, we're going to have a button that we will set up to do this function. To execute this function and it will close the app basically so this one's very easy the next function I'm going to use is this one and this one is related with what we were doing here so caps 2 and I want the user to input only caps lock and the way I'm going to do that and let me tell you so the way I'm going to do that see is every time this variable changes by any user input turn that input into caps lock okay so 
try to follow up try to follow me in the in the example uh, it's gonna get confusing um, what this function will do it's an event and it will set this variable that I defined here this one upper so it will set itself to whatever the user just input it input there and turn it to uppercase okay it's kind of self transforming to uppercase okay this is get it's kind of basic once you get it but um yeah it can get confusing if this is the first time you're, you're doing it that's why i'm trying to go really slow um <laughs> yeah and this one, this one well I also want the user not to be able to input more than three characters otherwise it's it's just a nice feature and like a safety feature that you can add to your app so let me so every time I click one more it kind of self removes what I'm doing um, this is what this function here is doing so if the length turns into something more than three um, then cut it to the first three characters okay uh, this is the caps too and like that we have the caps from which is going to do exactly the same but in this field remember the special one that I was telling you about kind of variable these are the ones that we are using here whenever there's some change we want the function to do it okay uh, we can actually run let's see what's happening here still nothing remember um, we we just created this but we didn't actually put it anywhere and these variables will be used in the entry boxes that we're going to be placing next um, probably on the next video so uh, or maybe actually I'm going to close this one and I'm going to add the entry boxes here really quick uh, where are they here okay <clears throat> so this is going to be from city entry okay tk entry this one just like the other ones tk frame tk label tk string var tk entry and the this entry is going to be in frame main one and its text variable is from city one and the width is four this is the tricky the important part not tricky this is the part where you decide that whatever is inside this entry box that's the value of this from city one and like we said this variable is a string var and we're going to be able to act whenever it changes and let's add the other entry box here and I'm going to pack them I'm going to pack going to do to pack them here so they can stay together and this one going to put it here okay let's see what we have okay and we start to see something we have two entry boxes and right now yeah it's not working 
parts. We still have to do some other stuff to make it work. It's it's cool. And that's what I'm going to show you on the next video. Um, we're going to add the other entry boxes. And um, yeah, so next video I'm going to show you. We're going to complete the, the frame, the middle frame. So we're going to complete this. We're going to assign the functions in order to do the caps lock automatically. And uh, we're going to add this, this entry to and work on the buttons. Okay. Until then, uh, let me know in the comments what you think and uh, your feedback is really important. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see the other videos. Uh, I'll leave some links down below for the article and the other parts of this tutorial. And yeah, thanks for watching.